In the wild world of the Mesozoic, few dinosaurs have greater defenses than the infamous Ankylosaurians. While all dinosaurs likely had some form of protection when they were alive, this clade within Thyreophora evolved to essentially become living bulwarks made of scales and osteoderms. In the wise words of literally every single football coach I have ever met, the best offense is a good defense. And it seems as though every known Ankylosaurian evolved this natural body armor for just that. Several different subfamilies exist in this clade of dinosaurs. You have the Ankylosaurids, which are the animals with the ridiculously powerful tail clubs, the Para-Ankylosaurids, which are the newest and most mysterious group of animals, and then you have the subject of this video, the Notosaurids. Lacking the head armor and tail clubs of their Ankylosaurid cousins, Notosaurids often had sharper and longer osteoderms that even became full-blown spines in some animals like Sauropelta. Notosaurids were also the oldest subfamily of Ankylosauria, and one of the first members of this family lived in the Morrison Formation of North America. Trotting through these Jurassic forests was the pig-sized Gargoyliosaurus parkpinorum, a small, spiny little beast that definitely would have needed all the protection it could get. But more on that in a minute. Unearthed in 1995, but not described until 1998, Gargoyliosaurus is estimated to be anywhere from 10 to 12 feet, or 4 meters in length, and weighed around 2,000 pounds or two US tons. For those who have no understanding of math, this animal weighed about as much as a full-grown bison and was almost as long as a Honda Civic. That may seem big, but later noosaurids, such as Pelorapleides, were anywhere from 16 to 20 feet long and weighed as much as 4,000 pounds. Three specimens of Gargoyliosaurus are known at the moment, and while only one has been fully described, it still gives us a good idea as to what it would have looked like when it was alive. But more importantly, we know what this animal's suit of armor would have looked like. Turns out Gargoyliosaurus had four different forms of dermal armor that vary in placement and shape. It had thick, elongated spines, flatter, more hollow plates that lined its sides from the neck down, rounded, crocodile-like osteoderms that covered its back in rows, and smaller, rounded osteoderms that helped form a sort of shield over the pelvis. The skull of the animal also has head and jugal horns that were very similar to later ankylosaurids, such as Tarchia and Ankylosaurus itself. As you can see, Gargoyliosaurus was basically a living rock with razor blades attached to it. As edgy as that description sounds. And it likely would have been a challenge for predators to kill. But what if this dermal armor wasn't enough? Would Gargoyliosaurus need an extra line of defense in case these osteoderms failed it? Well, before we get into that, I should point out that I am speculating at this point in the video. And while there could be some legitimacy to what I'm about to say, take everything from here on in with a grain of salt. The closest modern analogs for Ankylosaurian armor, at least that I can tell, are the shells of turtles. The shells of turtles and tortoises are also bone covered in a keratinous sheath, just like in the armored dinosaurs, and were used in a similar way. However, these shells aren't the most successful fortresses, and numerous animals have been known to crunch through them to get to the meat and organs within. This is why some turtles and tortoises have adapted secondary defenses to ward off these predators. Some of these reptiles have been known to bite and kick to defend themselves, however, some turtles have evolved more effective defenses. For example, the loggerhead musk turtle, also known as a stink pot, gets its nickname from the foul-smelling liquids they secrete when threatened. And yes, it does smell as bad as you think. But this adaptation also shows that there's always a need for a secondary defense in case the primary one just isn't enough. Now, we don't know what kind of secondary defense that Gargoyliosaurus would have, if it had any at all, but let's think about something for a minute. There were a lot of carnivorous theropods that lived in the Morrison Formation alongside Gargoyliosaurus. 
Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Torvosaurus, Ornithalestes, Stokisosaurus, Fostero Venator, Tanny Galagrius, Martiosaurus. You see why they need that armor? With so many predators, it would make sense for Gargoyosaurus to have some form of secondary defense. It's most likely that this animal would utilize camouflage to help it blend into the forests that it likely called home. However, if you wanted to get crazy with speculation, there are numerous modern animals with outlandish defenses. Gargoyosaurus could have had anything, like the spray of a skunk, or the biological glue of a tomato frog, or even the blood shooting eyes of a horned lizard. That may sound like a joke, but no, this thing is real. Again, we have no clue if Gargoyosaurus even had a secondary form of defense, and this is just my own speculation. But like I said at the beginning, the best offense is a good defense, even if it's incredibly offensive to the nose of a predator. But that is the end of the line for this video. Don't forget to like and comment on this video so people can learn more about this interesting dinosaur. Also, before I go, I want to thank you all so much for 500 subscribers. Since my dinosaur coloration video, you guys have not slowed down for a second. Thank you all so much, and it's because of people like you that I get to do stuff like this for fun. Well, that's it for now. See you around.